All right, so in the previous video, we saw the synthesis of PRPP, which is catalyzed by PRPP synthetase, and the starting point for that reaction is ribose 5-phosphate, which our cells are able to siphon out of the pentose phosphate pathway, okay? Well, now that, this, now that PRPP is made, it turns out that's going to be our starting point for purine synthesis. Now, there's one major topic that is, is likely to be taught in your course where you talk about nucleotide synthesis. And that's the differences between purine and pyrimidine synthesis. Now, I'm not going to go into all the enzyme names. That's really not important. But what is important are the implications of this pathway. All right. So what is a major difference between purine and pyrimidine synthesis? Well, if you look at the first few reactions here, okay, and by the way, starting here, this R group that you see, that R group is the ribose ring, okay? That is the ribose sugar, all right, or the ribose 5-phosphate. It turns out that the purine ring is going to be built onto an already existing ribose 5-phosphate. Okay, this ribose 5-phosphate right here. The purine ring is built from scratch on the ribose ring. Okay, when we look at pyrimidine synthesis, we're going to see that the, the ring, the pyrimidine ring, is going to be made separately. And then in a later step, once that ring has cyclized, the pyrimidine ring that is, it's then added onto the ribose ring. But here, the nitrogenous base is made from scratch already on the ribose ring. Okay, so that's a major difference between uh, pyrimidine and purine synthesis, all right? That's a major difference we have. But in any case, we're gonna start with PRPP. Now, what you should notice about purine synthesis is that it's very energetically costly. You should notice that in this synthesis, we're gonna rely on four ATPs to make one inosinate. Now, Inosinate, or IMP, is not one of your normal nucleotides that we talk about. However, inosinate is going to be turned into AMP and GMP. Okay, so just understand that we have to first make inosinate, or IMP. Okay, but to make one IMP, we have to use four ATPs. And if you think about it, from the last video, to make PRPP, we have to use another ATP molecule. So really, to get from ribose 5-phosphate just to inosinate, we're actually going to have to use five ATPs total. But just from this step, we're going to be using four. Okay? But the point is, it's very energetically costly. Okay? And also notice some other things it's going to require. It's going to require activated tetrahydrofolate. Here's an N10-formal tetrahydrofolate. Here's another N10 formal tetrahydrofolate. So we're going to have to use some already activated high energy folate derivatives in order to make this purine ring. All right. Um, some other things to consider is notice that in two steps also we're actually going to be using glutamine. So we're actually going to use to, to build the nitrogens onto the ring and, and make it cyclize. We're going to have to use the nitrogen from two glutamines. Okay. So in any case, we're also going to be taking everyday molecules around the cell. Notice we use a glycine in step two. We're going to use an aspartate in step seven. All right. So make sure that you at least understand that, that we're going to use a wide range of and variety of molecules from around the cell to build the purine ring. Okay. But we're doing that to build this ring right here, which is inosinate. Okay. And then that's also called IMP. All right. Now, another thing also to notice. Now, this does not occur in humans because, and really mammals in general, because histidine is what we call an essential amino acid. We don't, we don't make it ourselves. We have to get histidine through the diet. But one thing I just want to point out is notice this uh, molecule right here at the end of step five, which they abbreviate up here. This is aminoamidazole ribonucleotide, also called AIR, okay? Notice another thing. Air is processed into this molecule right here through enzyme 6 called aminocarboxaminoimidazole ribonucleotide. You abbreviate this A-C-A-I-R or ICAR. Okay? Do you remember where we saw an ICAR? We saw an ICAR in histidine synthesis. 
If you remember correctly, we actually kicked off an ICAR in the middle of histidine synthesis. And I say we, as in we talked about it. Bacteria are the ones that do that. But if you are a bacteria, you can actually take the ICAR that's synthesized in histidine synthesis and shunt it right into here, into this purine synthesis pathway. And it turns out that histidine is actually, its synthesis is more similar to nucleotide synthesis than it actually is to amino acid synthesis. After all, the imidazole of histidine is actually found in the purine ring, where my mouse is. That is the imidazole ring of histidine. So just some interesting things there. In any case, the first part of purine synthesis, which is a lot longer than pyrimidine synthesis, is going to be to make this IMP. All right. Once we have the IMP, we are then going to turn the IMP into adenylate or guanylate. All right. And we're going to talk about that right now, and then in the next video we'll go into the regulation of this pathway. Now, there is one thing I do want to show you, and I'm skipping ahead here for one reason. We're not going to do this pathway in this video. This is pyrimidine synthesis. Here's aspartate, our starting point, and here's CTP and UTP. All right. I want you to notice something. This pathway for pyrimidine synthesis looks a lot shorter than purine synthesis. After all, this is 10 enzymes just to make inosinate, then we have to process those further to make AMP and GMP. Just kind of a conceptual question, why do you suppose pyrimidine synthesis is so much shorter than purine synthesis? Well, the reason has to do obviously with the fact that pyrimidines only have one ring. Purines have two. So you can imagine to make two aromatic rings, it's gonna take a lot more steps than just to make one, which would be what you would find in pyrimidine. So that's just more of a conceptual question, all right? Now, once we have this inosinate, or IMP shown on the left side, we're going to use a series of enzymes, two each, to either make AMP or GMP. And it turns out that which direction we go is very tightly regulated also. If I want to go from IMP to adenylate, I'm going to react with this enzyme up here, number one, and it turns out that enzyme is called adenylosuccinate synthetase. And that's going to ultimately put an aspartate up here. And then adenylosuccinate lyase will give me AMP. All right. You should notice that this step right here is going to require a high energy phosphate, meaning GTP. It's not ATP. It's actually GTP. And we're going to go into the implications of that in just a minute. Inosinate can also be processed to guanylate. And that's done through this enzyme right here, which is called IMP dehydrogenase, which is going to give us XMP or xanthylate, and then XMP glutamine amidotransferase is going to give us GMP. All right. Now, this step right here, and it's not really so much important which one of these steps it is, this step uses a high energy phosphate, but it's an ATP, all right, to do this reaction right here. Now, you should notice something very important that we're going to bring out in the next video where we talk about the regulation. From inosinate, to make AMP, or adenylate, to make AMP, I have to use a GTP. To make GMP, I have to use an ATP. In other words, to make an A, I have to use a G, and to make a G, I have to use an A, right? It's not a coincidence that that happens, okay? It actually has some very important implications, particularly in the regulation of the synthesis of adenylate and guanylate, all right? So hopefully this gives you a sort of a broad picture of purine synthesis, all right? What, one of the main things to remember is that when we start with PRPP, purine rings are going to be synthesized on the ribose ring. We're going to make the purine ring from scratch on the ribose ring. You can hopefully see we have a nitrogen there, and then we're going to build it up slowly, slowly, but surely. So the purine ring is going to be made on the ribose ring. When we get to pyrimidine synthesis, we separately make the ring, cyclize it, and then we attach it onto the ribose. Okay, a very different strategy for making those. But in any case, we go from PRPP to inosinate, and then we can process inosinate further into adenylate and guanylate. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. In the next video, we're going to go over the allosteric regulation of purine synthesis, and what we'll see is that there's two levels of it. Join us in the next video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. Thank you.